Hello everyone. Welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lectures, we understood different types of constants in C++. Now from this lecture onwards, we will understand the concept of data types and we will also discuss different data types available in C++. The focus of this lecture will be on understanding the need for data types. First, I want you to know why we need data types in C++. This lecture is dedicated for that purpose. The name of this lecture is Need for Data Types. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. There is only one topic that is Need for Data Types. Let's proceed further and let's understand why do we need data types in C++. Do you know what happens when we define a variable in a C++ code? We know how to define a variable in C++. We first need to specify the data type, then the name of the variable. And we can also initialize the variable, that is we can provide the initial value to the variable. We can do list initialization or other forms of initialization as needed. This is how we define a variable in C++. But do you know what happens behind the scenes when we define a variable? Whenever we define a variable in C++, some amount of random access memory will be allocated for that variable. This is how we can imagine a random access memory. Random access memory could be thought of as a sequence of blocks or the collection of blocks where each block has the capability to store one byte of data. And each block has an associated address. The address helps us to identify that block, that is to search for that block. Now these are simplified addresses. I'm not saying these addresses will be allocated. These addresses are simplified versions of the more complex addresses. For simplification, I chose these addresses. The address of this block is 1000. The address of this block is 1001. The address of this block is 1002 and so on. These are my assumptions. Now let us assume that some data is already stored in random access memory in binary form. Understand that whatever data we try to store in random access memory will always be stored in binary form. It does not matter what type of data we store. So the data will always be stored in the form of zeros and ones like this. These are random numbers I have placed here. These are all binary numbers. You can observe that each block is holding 8-bit data, that is 1-byte data. I hope this is making sense to you. This is the simplified representation of the random access memory and these are my assumptions of the addresses and these are my assumptions of the data that is stored in the random access memory. Now let's say we have defined a variable in our code. For that variable, let us assume that these four blocks are allocated starting from address 1000 to 1003. So, the variable is occupying these four blocks. This is what I have mentioned here. Blocks occupied by a variable which we have defined in our C++ code. That variable could be of any type. And depending upon that, the blocks will be allocated. It is not the case that every type of variable will hold four blocks. It is possible that a specific variable holds two blocks, maybe one block. This is what we will learn later, how this is decided. For now, just understand that some variable is holding these blocks. So with this, we learned that data in random access memory is always stored in binary form. And whenever we define a variable, some blocks will be allocated for that variable. I hope this concept is clear to you. Now let's move forward. Let's say we want to access the data of this variable 
That is, we want to access this entire binary number, which is of 32 bits. There are a total of 32 bits here because each block has 8 bits. There are 4 blocks, so clearly this data is of 32 bits. We want to access this data and we want to print this data. Now, my question is how computer determines the type of this data? This is binary data. How computer knows what type of data this binary number is representing? Is it an integer, a character, a float, a double? What type of data this specific binary number of 32 bits is representing? That's the question. How computer determines the type? We are asking the computer to print this data. This must be printed in the format which we want. But how computer determines this? This can be determined from the data type of the variable. I would like to mention this, that data type tells the type and size of the data a variable is holding. A variable has a data type. If we define a variable, then it must have a data type. That data type tells the type and the size of the data which is stored in the variable. I hope this is clear to you. From the size, one can determine how many blocks the variable needs. And from the type, one can determine the type of data that is stored in RAM. So, computer determines the type of this data from the data type of the variable. So, with this, we have understood the importance of data type. Data type tells both the type and size of the data. From the size, computer knows how many blocks a specific data needs. And from the type, computer deduces the type of the data that is stored in RAM. Now, in order to understand this concept better, let's take one example. Let's understand the complete process of encoding and decoding that happens behind the scenes with the help of an example. Let's say I have defined this variable var. This variable var has the data type int. This means this variable can hold an integer value. Here I have initialized this variable with value 5. And there is no type mismatch. We can observe the data type is matching with the type of the value here. This value is an integer. Therefore, there is no type mismatch. From the data type, computer gets this information. Computer knows the type of the data, which is integer. And computer also knows the size of the data, which is 4 bytes. Now you might be thinking why I have written 4 bytes here. This is already defined by the language. We do not have to worry about this. It is the general assumption that an integer takes 4 bytes of memory. So clearly from the size, computer knows how many blocks this specific data needs. This specific data needs 4 blocks of memory because the size of this data is 4 bytes. Before storing this data, we need to encode this data in binary form. This data can be encoded to this binary data. This is what we can observe. We already know how to convert an integer to a binary number. I have done the same thing here. I have represented this number in this binary form with 8 bits. Because of the lack of space, I have done this. I have mentioned dot 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 here to represent those 24 bits which I have not mentioned here. There are a total of 32 bits because the size of this data is 4 bytes which is equivalent to 32 bits. I have only mentioned the 8 bits of this data. The remaining 24 bits are all zeros. I have indicated those remaining bits by three dots. I hope this is clear to you. So, this is the binary form of this data. Now, 
this binary data will get stored in random access memory. Four blocks will be occupied by this data. I am assuming that these four blocks are occupied by this data starting from address 1000 to 1003. Here you can observe the first 24 bits are all zeros and these are the last 8 bits 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 1. So this is the binary number stored in random access memory. This binary number of 32 bits is representing this value 5. I hope this process is clear to you. This is the process of encoding. Encoding is possible because of the size of the data. We are getting the size information from the data type. So clearly, data type plays a very important role in storing the data. From data type, computer determines the size of the data. In this case, the size is 4 bytes. So computer knows that the data needs 4 blocks. After encoding this value to 32 bits binary data, the data will be stored in the random access memory precisely in the four blocks of random access memory. So this is the process of encoding. I hope it is clear to you. Now, let's understand what happens when we try to access this data. Let's say we want to access this data and we want to print it on the screen. For this purpose, computer has to understand what this binary number represents and this can be understood from the data type of the variable. Data type also tells the type of the data that is stored here. The type of this data is integer. This is what we can see. Computer knows this. So clearly, computer will decode this binary number to its equivalent integer, which is 5. In this way, 5 will be displayed on the screen, not this binary number. This is the process of decoding. And decoding is possible because of the type information we are getting from the data type. Obviously, this is the simplified process of encoding and decoding. There is a lot that happens behind the scenes. This is out of the scope of this course. That's why I have not mentioned here. This simplified process explains why we need data types. With the help of data type, it is possible to store the data and it is also possible to decode that data so that the actual data which we want should get displayed on the screen. So with this, we learned the importance of data types and this means we are done with this topic and we are also done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.